So today I got back on this duplex of project. I went ahead and got two more cans. Um, these cans are about three sixths of an inch taller than the other cans, but basically there shouldn't be no problem with that. But one thing I found out that uh, on this tuning that we're using for the course tune, it is very touchy and very easy to overshoot. So I decided I would go ahead when I build these two cans is to um, do something a little differently. And then I've got two more cans like this also that I could uh, go back and replace the other two cans with. But I got an idea that uh, might fix it, you know, because you're sitting here and you're trying to ease this up and down. And uh, it's, it's real touchy. So let's look at something else. This is one cylinder from a 800 megahertz um, four cavity duplexer. I have two of these full units, and uh, we can see that. Let me see, let me see the knob a little bit. There. You can see how the uh, coarse tune is, is done on this. It's a threaded rod and it's just a, uh, a steel rod with a jam nut on it. And it goes down through a, a threaded insert so you can screw the capacitor length in and out. And I like that design. That seems to work real good because you're only moving it just a little bit at a time. So what we're going to do differently here is instead of making our center rod, which is the biggest diameter piece, um, four inches, I cut it three and a quarter. And I took the last quarter inch and I split it and I folded it over. Now my thoughts are is this. This will drop down in here. Make sure I got a very tight hole this time. And we can sort of these tabs here on the top directly to the can while we're aligning it. Then what we're going to do is take a brass nut and solder directly to the top of that. And we have a quarter twenty threaded rod. And this will go through there. The brass nut will be on this end. Then I'll tune in plunger. We'll be in there like that. And what I'll do, I'll have to uh, pin this and solder it to the inside of this uh, inner tube. Now you know we can't solder the uh, the steel rod that good, so what I'll do, I'll drill it and I'll put a brass pin through it and solder it and file it down and that should stay attached to our center rod so as we screw the threaded rod this will bring the length of the tube in and out and she'll make you know a much finer tuning range okay so what I did I uh, cut my inner tube the length that it needed to be I drilled a small hole all the way through it put a brass pin in and soldered it up on both sides and then filed it down so that now that will slide in and out the tube and this should help that tuning a bit so we'll see how it goes so there we go now I like that a whole lot better all we got to do now is just turn it put a locking nut we can screw down in it and lock it in place I think that's much better
that should work a whole lot better all right so now i got to install the bnc connector put the pickup in put the fine adjust over here on the side and then build the other one make up a phasing cable to connect all these together wait for my new tees to come in and I can start doing some more in-depth testing so I spent just about all day on uh, redesigning this and uh, I'm real pleased with how it works now You see I can easily drop the single about 10 dBm at a time. So not bad. Nose it right on down. I got a pretty strong single going into it in the duplex mode, but yeah, that works a lot better. So now I got to build the other can. Like I say most of the morning was done just on uh, experimenting around with this and trying different things, and I do like the uh, tunable. Um, course adjustment over the uh, slip tube that works so much better so someone asked well, why do I even take time to do something like this well several reasons if you go out and you try to purchase a set of duplexes let's say VHF we bought a set back up in I think it was 99 or 2000 I said a Wacom duplex was, was $1,800 now you got to uh, remember that those duplexers are coated inside with silver and this is to help keep them more stable and uh, like I say temperature will affect these duplexers if you tune these duplexer in a 70 degree room you want to keep them at the repeater site at 70 degrees not 40 not 90 because it can change the characteristics of the duplexer but if you got them in a controlled environment they should work just fine um, second thing with today's throw away world um, you know people buy stuff throw it away um, and being part of the ham radio one thing that ham radio was always known for was experimenting and building stuff yourself and to me that is the part of the hobby that's uh, sort of gotten lost and it's not as many as used to uh, you know in this, to doing this stuff they just run out and buy a brand new radio and when it breaks they put it in the box and send it back to the manufacturer and have it worked on well, that's all good, but you know, I'm I'm sort of old school, and I like hands-on and doing things myself. And uh, to me, that's what ham radio is about. Yeah, so I really like the design of this a lot better than I do the uh, other ones. So I think uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get two more of these cans and just build two more complete units that we'll match these and uh, we'll give them some testing and if they won't quite isolate it's good I still got these so we can end up having six cavities instead of four but we'll have to play around that and see see how they go if nothing up this could be used on something else so anyway uh, yeah that's kind of interesting it's gonna be really fun to sit down and uh, go through this and see how they turn out 
Anyway, I got a lot of cleaning up to do. The uh, workbench tools are scattered everywhere. So, only got to get in here and get cleaned up tomorrow. And might play around, do some more testing, get my T's in, get this whole thing hooked up. Put the repeater on the bench and start doing some work to that and see what we can come out with. So uh, we'll catch you next time.